So, okay, uh, Martin, uh, uh, great that you make some time uh, to, for this interview. Uh, we're going to talk about it uh, together and what happened and your lessons learned uh, from it and the story behind. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what was Together? What is Together? Yeah, well, Together is still uh, alive and kicking. Uh, together is a carpool and ride sharing app, uh, which we launched early 2011 in the Netherlands. And, 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 and how did you get to the idea and how did you uh, make the idea into re reality? Well, actually, it was from my own practical experience. Uh, I live in Amsterdam and parking is extremely expensive here. So I got rid of my car because there was no use for using a car in Amsterdam. And I was looking for alternatives and I was thinking, well, there are 8 million cars in Netherlands. Why can't I just uh, ride with somebody else? That sounds fun. And then? Well, I started looking for uh, apps or websites and actually there were already some services out there. But not, in my opinion, something that... Uh, was using the state of the technology and as well as social technologies. So I decided in the end to uh, yeah, to develop something uh, myself. And uh, and what way did it, uh, did it uh, was it different from existing uh, uh, apps or platforms in in ride sharing? Well, first of all, they were all uh, web based uh, instead of using web technologies in general. So you could also use it on a mobile device. It was not using any social function like integration with uh, Facebook, if you would like. And, uh, well, the user interface was really, really poor. For instance, if you would search for a ride and there was nobody available, that would be the end of the story. In our case, you could also request for a ride. So if somebody else would offer a ride later on, the system would automatically match and notify every involved party. And uh, how did you, f uh, for the users, because uh, uh, it's a threshold to, 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 to share your, your, uh, your ride or to share your uh, need for a ride. Yeah. And what way did you make the threshold as low as possible for people to, to participate? Well, uh, understand the position uh, from different parties. Huh? For somebody who owns a, a car, who's willing actually to share his empty seat, it should be very, very sim uh, simple to do so. So um, the registration should be extremely easy. The whole onboarding process should be easy. It should be possible, for instance, to say, I drive every Monday, Tuesday and Friday to that location at that time. So minimal amount of work and at the same time, maximum amount of trust and uh, uh, maintain uh, the, the, the privacy uh, regulations. And um, uh, at, at, at what way uh, uh, was the process of building the app uh, uh, done? So, 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 so how did you start? So how how did you manage to get your finance and, and your right partners on board? Yeah, well, let's start with uh, partners because that's more important than anything else. Finding a good co-founder, somebody who also believes in the concept, who um, you think is an entrepreneur as well, who is willing to put a lot of effort, both time and money uh, into such a project before actually anything can come out. And along the way, I found somebody after actually sharing my ID many, many times. I started the blog. I asked people to, uh, to, to repost uh, my request for good co-founders. Eventually, I found somebody. And from then on, we were yeah, basically the founders of, uh, of Together. And the money is, of course, a very different story. And what is the story about the money? <laughs> well, um, we started talking with uh, investors and the Netherlands is different, uh, the climate for investors, especially in 2010 or 2011, than from what you hear about VCs in, uh, in uh, San Francisco, for instance. So we started talking to a few VCs, but we discovered quite early on that they would invest in a later stage. They call themselves early stage, but they would def uh, I would define them more as, as late stage or later stage, sorry. We found some money at uh, foundations who were actually investing into uh, startups in uh, uh, mobility and especially in uh, sustainable mobility. And they have seen uh, similar cases before, but I uh, probably found our story very, very uh, compelling. So they uh, decided to invest in us, but more as a subsidy than as an um, as a, as a investment in stock. And um, the last time we talked, uh, the interview is also at our uh, channel on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we were at your office in Amsterdam. Yeah. Uh, so now we're here in, in your beautiful boat, also in Amsterdam. So yeah. I think this is even a better place to be than, uh, than in the office uh, where you were. Yeah. Uh, what, happened, what happened in between? Because then the situation was uh, th uh, there was an app, uh, it, it was mm -hmm. working, but you really have had some trouble with the business model and how to get yeah. money out of it to make it also a model that, that works uh, uh, for the future. So what happened? Well, of course, uh, when you start, you have a lot of energy. 
and you're very enthusiastic. So with that enthusiasm and a good story, you can actually get PR. So I managed to get on TV, a lot of coverage in newspapers uh, and magazines everywhere. So that was actually building a lot of traffic. But at the same time, it was still difficult uh, for people to, um, to find a, a, a ride because you need an enormous supply of rides uh, because people go from A to B at a certain time uh, with somebody uh, you want to be in a car with. So that already limits enormously the, the, the possibility for a match. So of course we had matches and people driving together, but still that volume was quite low. So we partnered for instance with uh, music festivals, but that's of course only happening once a year in the summertime. And that is not building daily usage, which is required for such apps. So we had a team of about seven enthusiastic people. We found some more subsidies uh, to get us going. Um, we were actually the number one carpool app in the, in the Netherlands quite, quite soon. We were improving our product. So everything was going smooth, but the, the idea we had about the business model was, was all wrong. We had a business model based on a fee like Airbnb is doing, but yeah, the average ride is maybe 10 or 15 euros. So let's say 15% of that is only two euros. That's very hard to, uh, yeah, to pay salaries from. And in the beginning, uh, uh, the service uh, was for free. Yeah. And uh, also to, uh, to build a, a, a user base. And, 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 and then you say, okay, and now you're going to pay uh, a fee uh, for, uh, for, uh, for the same service. Uh, so how did people respond it and, and, and what you well, do? With our, it? our story was a little bit different because initially we already said, uh, you can also ask, uh, sorry, offer rights for free. Um, so we're not making money either. And uh, in case people want money, we take a cut out of that. So that was already from day one. Okay. So, but at a certain moment, we saw that the um, the business model was more uh, doing us uh, harm than actually helping us. So we decided to take out the whole idea of a paid model in the consumer space. So people were actually uh, quite happy about it. We saw the traffic going up. Um, so in that case, it was not like what normally happening, offering offer something for free and later on decide to ask money for it. So we did not have a lot of fight back. We made some changes in between those two uh, models. And then we had some, uh, yeah, the community was not always positive about uh, changing the fees, etc., etc. But yeah, you have to live with it. Yeah, and, 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 and what are your main lessons learned from, from this, this, this quest in finding the right benefits uh, in, 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 in making the community happy, but also in searching for a business model to uh, continue your platform? Um, good question. Let me think about that. I think um, you have to be honest, first of all. You have to be, um, you can say to your customers or your users, currently it's a, it's a free product, but in the future we will ask money for it. You have to be clear about that. So people know, of course, they don't know when it will happen or maybe the percentages can can, uh, can change in a the direction they, they, they don't like. Uh, but I think you have to be transparent and open about it. I also learned that you cannot ask your users how much they are willing to pay for something. Uh, you have to tell that and at the same time that means that some of the people won't like it, but something you have to live with. Uh, I would say that if 40% of, of your community loves your product, they also are willing to pay for it. Okay, and, 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 and then what happened? Because uh, um, in the end, uh, did, did you find the right, the right business model or, 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 or the right earning model for the, uh, for the platform? No, we did not. Um, after we uh, took out our business model in the consumer space, we had an idea about uh, building a business product, which we actually built and we were selling already to some corporates. Um, we call it Carpool as a Service, so a complete environment, uh, not for everybody, but just for the uh, employees of such a company. Mm -hmm. And they could pay on a, on a, on a subscription base, a, a SaaS model, eh, um, for our Carpool service. But we discovered that uh, companies were really into carpooling. They were uh, telling their, their employees, please sit with each other in a car because that's saving money and it's sustainable. But in the end, they didn't want to pay for a solution because that would make them owner of the uh, of the uh, uh, the mobility problem in the morning to get to the office. So they tried to uh, avoid that sort of that uh, responsibility. Yeah. So you, so the idea was to 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 to, to keep the, the 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 consumer part for free and, exactly. and pay it with the income from the corporates. Yeah. And 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 dealing with the corporates. Uh, what kind of uh, things did you did, did, did you saw? Well, well, what did you learn from 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 the discussions? I think maybe for you it was quite 
uh, surprising to, to, to hear uh, uh, the reason why they didn't join. But did, did you had some other nice insights? Um, I think their approach to mobility or um, uh, human resources in general is quite traditional. Um, the things I saw 20 years ago are still happening at those departments and there's not much innovation going on the way um, they arrange mobility or the way they um, have facilities arranged for their, for their personnel. So, and, 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 and uh, did you saw some examples of organizations that, that, that were uh, trying to change? Uh, yes, uh, for instance, uh, especially in IT, it was very commonplace 20 years ago that every consultant or developer would get a lease car. Well, I think that's past now. And um, so they were building uh, alternatives for, for lease cars that you would get actually if you not would take the lease car that you would get some extra salary. Mm -hmm. But in the end, I figured out um, there was still largely an incentive for the employer to do so because they were actually making money on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah, I think it's really fascinating because what I think, uh, I also saw the example of IKEA in, in Canada. Uh, uh, they're also doing this with employees because in the end, as an employer, you really create different kind of values because you save money. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also su uh, sustainable, so good for the environment. And also social, because when people are driving together, they yep. they, are, they, uh, they got a, a better commitment to, to each other and to the company. So mm -hmm. I'm really surprised that they, but I'm surprised every yeah. day, so that's not fair. Well, probably they have a, a lot on their minds and a lot of things to work on, and this is uh, not uh, not enough importance to uh, to put priority to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different, different priorities. Different priorities. Uh, and then, because then you're at the moment that you think, okay, we tried different things to, to, yeah. to, to keep this sustainable, but we can't find anything uh, and then what, what, what well, happened? Well, um, because we were um, not getting uh, the financial uh, cash flow what we were needing for, of course we had to uh, say goodbye to some of our, uh, um, of our people and we felt hmm, this is not going the right direction. We already made uh, two pivots uh, now, so what's going to be the next step? And I could not come up with a, uh, a very thoughtful idea that I would uh, yeah, believe in. So I was talking to my other shareholders saying, mm, I think we have to, uh, to do something uh, drastically. And eventually we decided to, uh, to put up a blog post and say, well, we tried many, many things. We're very transparent in what we've done. It was a long blog post with a lot of viewers in the end. People are really happy about it. Um, but we also said by the end of this year we're going to pull the plug. The service will uh, go out of serve. It will go out of business. But if uh, somebody has a suggestion, uh, you're open. We are open to it. So we received like 25 companies who were interested in uh, in continuing the service. And and it sounds re uh, uh, really practical uh, about okay, uh, we don't know how to do it, so we put it on a blog post. It, it, it was a really good blog post. I also read it. Mm -hmm. well, I was also one of the viewers. Uh, but uh, for you as an entrepreneur, it, 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 it's I think a really a, a, a hard decision to make. Yeah, true. So, yeah, it's, it, of course, if you do a startup, you put everything you have into the startup, both time and money wise, and. Uh, you give up vacations and you don't uh, pay enough time for your family, etc., etc. So it's a, it's a big uh, offer you're making, and you have to be very careful that you don't emotionally get dragged away. Of course, that's uh, very logical that will happen, but yeah, your emotions can go in any direction, and it makes it very hard to make business decisions. Yeah, yeah. and and then at 25 uh, organizations want to to continue your, your baby. Yeah. Uh, so w what did the process look like the, by then? Well, first of all, um, you need approval from your other stakeholders, otherwise you cannot put a blog post up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, surprise. <laughs> yeah, well, you'll be surprised. Um, I decided, well, everybody wanted to meet with me and I was thinking, I don't want to have 25 meetings. I want to structure it. So I sent a response asking four questions, um, which were more qualifying questions. Let's see if they have a thought, if they have an idea of what they're going to do with it, if they would actually think uh, about a, a future business model or would immediately uh, need uh, income from it and if they would put resources to it. And based on that, only four companies uh, uh, we proceeded with. And eventually two and then yeah, one. One. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and what's the company that's now continuing uh, together? Yeah, it's a, it's a Dutch startup as well. Uh, they have VC funding. They're called uh, Calendar 42. And they have a beautiful business-to-business -business, uh, calendaring app. 
and that uh, takes all the hassle out of making business appointments, including uh, all the mobility uh, and that's included. And, and, and of course, it's really easy to look back uh, on, on what happened and then say, okay, uh, next time I would uh, do this different. Uh, but w uh, what are your main lessons learned? And what if uh, tomorrow you would start another together again? Together yeah. again, maybe it's a good name. Uh, uh -huh. What kind of things are you going to do different uh, by then? Well, I think before you actually do something new, you give it a much harder thought. Um, of course, you have to be very positive about many things, but you can also be very critical at your own ideas. So you have to validate many, many things, not always in the lean startup way. I don't think it's not that binary, but I've learned a lot of stuff about marketplaces, how they function, how to build critical mass. Mm -hmm. It's extremely important. And for carpooling, in my opinion, it's still not solved. Of course, there are a few companies now out there who are growing really fast, they're buying market share, but it's still not proven if they eventually will get uh, profitable. Um, so the business model needs to be um, in from day one and also a business model that you would actually know it's gonna work. Mm -hmm. And that's not that easy always. No, that's right. Yeah, but I think we did a lot of things very, very well. And, and, and but you need to do all of them very well, eh? yeah, or all, <laughs> most of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nobody's perfect. And, and 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 what other things that you say? Okay, we did this really well. So 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 what so what other things that you're really proud of and that you would do exactly exactly the same uh, maybe yeah. next time? Well, the way we were actually um, mm -hmm. uh, spending money, I think we have always been very lean in that respect. We were always sitting on the cash flow. In the end, the company was not going bankrupt. There was no uh, investor losing money. Um, so that means uh, we did something, I think, in terms of finance very well. And because, yeah, you always have to spend the money like it's your own money. Don't think it's coming from a VC and they're a bunch of rich guys and, uh, you know. Uh, I don't think that's very respectful and it doesn't make you a very good entrepreneur. Um, other things is how you work with people. Um, you have to provide them an income, you have to provide them a contract. Um, because you ask a lot from them as a startup. They can also work at a big bank, get double salaries and work less hours. So what's, what are you providing for them why they would work with you? And, and why do people want to work with you instead of uh, working at a bank with a double salary and a lease car and a fuel card? Yeah, maybe the f some other reasons are the same. I'm an entrepreneur and not working at the bank. Uh, I don't fit very well in large structures uh, which are driven from the top. And for these people, they want to build stuff and see it in production a day or two days later and not a month later or never at all. And that's important. And uh, so uh, now you're, you're uh, uh, not working uh, with Together anymore. Uh, are you still watching it from a distance uh, almost happening or did you really let it loose and, 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 and just say, okay, now you're uh, in somebody else's hands and uh, yeah. have a good well, life? Well, that's something I discussed, of course, with Calendar 42. Um, my intention was never to tell them what to do, because if I know what to do, I can better do it myself. So I already told them in the beginning, I provide my support as much as you, as you need, not in operational sense, of course, but more in a strategical level. Um, and I already had some thoughts, and that's why we also chose them, um, what they want to do with uh, together. So at this moment, I'm not involved anymore operationally or strategically. And I have a very good relation with uh, Calendar 42. Sometimes leads still come in and I will send them over to them. And, uh, and uh, uh, what were the four questions that you were asking the 25 uh, organizations? I don't know exactly anymore, but uh, the topics I just mentioned. Uh, for me, most important was that uh, the service would be continued, not just uh, we have a customer database, thank you very much for the service, and now we, uh, we have a very cheap database. That was not the ID, so continuation of the service. Uh, um, whether they would put resources and money to it, huh? because you have to, you cannot mm -hmm. just do the same and see suddenly uh, success. Um, the third one I can't recall, but it was probably a similar question in that uh, direction. And the fourth one, uh, whether they would want to also uh, compensate to the founders a little bit for all of their efforts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. And, and, and now you uh, started your new initiative. So yeah. can, you case, can you tell us something more about that? Yeah, well, my background uh, um, before I started uh, together was very much into e-commerce and online marketing. I was heading the e-commerce department in uh, TomTom. And 
well, web analytics was always a very important uh, topic for us to see what was going on uh, on our websites. But quite often we saw stuff happening, but we didn't understand why it was happening. So I now uh, yeah, have a new, uh, well, I don't actually call it a startup anymore, a new company called Insights, and that's providing qualitative feedback. So you can ask feedback on your website visitors via very small, uh, highly targeted uh, polls and surveys. And, and which lessons from your uh, Together Adventure do, do you take into your new uh, company? Well, um, it's a B2B company. Uh, it's a SaaS service, uh, software as a service, so there are some differences. But um, for us, feedback is really, really important. Um, we are going actually very well. I joined the company less than three months ago and we already have a, a long list of paying customers. So <laughs> we're doing good. Respect. <laughs> uh, but that doesn't mean anything. I cannot uh, say, well, we're now here, so we're going to be there or there uh, next year. No, it's still every person who starts a trial, I personally reach out to them. So no automated emails. I send them an email and you can see from the email it's tailored. I ask for the feedback, what they want to accomplish what are they currently doing, what kind of solution they would need. So that's something I definitely learned from my from, from Together huh? in the, the using the Lean Startup methodology. Huh? It's about uh, yeah, um, very close connection to your customer and understand what is their pain point. If you don't understand, no solution will ever uh, work or you it will work, but you don't know why. And also um, the fact that we're bootstrapping everything I think we are in a position now that we could uh, get investors on board, but I don't want investors on board at this stage. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we get a revenue stream and we're not spending basically anything. And that's, uh, I think, a very good way to build a good foundation of a company. Okay. I think some of the startups, when they get investment, they're spending far too much and they get too many people on board. And I think there's a lot of waste. And that's actually a contradiction of being a startup. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, and and uh, and where can people find more information? Well, insights. It's uh, it's uh, spelled i n s i t e z or z dot com. Okay. Yeah, and it's a tool for qualitative uh, web analytics. Okay, great. Thank you very much for sharing your lessons. Well, thank you very much. It was my pleasure. Bye -bye. Mm -hmm.